All right, guys, welcome to another uh, week's Q&A. Um, as always, if you want your question answered, be sure to keep an eye out on my Instagram. I'll always post a story the day before we film these and uh, just answer them straight off my phone as I get them. Um, so, without further ado, let's hop into it. Really, I'm not lying when I say I just answer them like right off my phone. So, if you want your question answered, just ask away whenever you see it posted. All right. Let's see here. That's a good one to start with. What do you think of Crizzo competing, uh, coming to the Olympia potentially? Um, I think it's absolutely awesome that he is moving over. I think it is, you know, I think his physique's awesome. I think he's going to be able to handle his own on a pro stage. Um, I do think he needs to earn a pro card and qualify first, though, for sure. And I'm not saying that, like, as a knock against him. I'd say that about absolutely anyone. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing him getting up on a pro stage. I don't think that's an if, it's a when thing, and it's looking like it should be this year. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to following along with that one. Next one, GDA supplements, worth it. Um, it depends on the setting and the use. I feel like a lot of people use a GDA supplement with, like, every single meal because they feel, like, bloated ass without it. If that's the case, you don't need to be taking a GDA um, if you're strategically employing them, like with your higher carbohydrate meals or with your cheat meals or something like that, I have absolutely no problem with it. There's a lot of uh, really good research behind uh, a lot of the popular ingredients in GDA, especially berberine. So, you know, take that for what it is. It's a supplement, not a, uh, you know, prescription you take with every meal, I guess. Um, foot position relative to Smith machine on a Smith squat. Best position for quads. So, all that we're after, if you're after, you know, maximal quad stimulation, is getting as much knee flexion as possible. So, you know, a couple things are going to do that. A, foot placement is going to do that, but B, you know, your, your whole body positioning is going to do that. You want to make sure you have a big chest and you, uh, you know, stay squatting with a proud chest the whole time. You know, like back pretty much straight up and down. What you want to really focus on is initiating with your knees, not your hips coming back. So you can break at the hips, you can break at the knees to initiate a squat. You want to break at the knees to initiate a Smith squat if you're trying to focus on your quads and then really focus on driving the knees out over your toes. As far as foot positioning goes, you know, rough rule of thumb I'd say is you want like your heel, you know, like underneath your shoulder as a starting point. Um, that might be too close if your ankle flexion is not really good. But at the end of the day, the more underneath you, underneath your feet, underneath you, your feet are, the more underneath your feet are to you, the more knee flexion you're going to be able to get in the hole. So the rate limiting factor is going to be ankle flexion. Um, if you've seen me do Smith squats, you've seen me use the prime wedges. I have poor ankle flexion. Um, and that's, you know, a way that I'm able to really get into the hole and get maximal knee flexion out of the Smith squat. Next, um, I want to buy t-shirts from Italy. Is it possible? Um, guys, I cannot tell you how much international interest I've gotten in the win the day shirts. And I feel very, very, very blessed and honored to have received said interest. Um, that being said right now, I'm still trying to find an economical way to get them to y'all because... You know, most of the time the shipping is more than the t-shirt. And I know a lot of y'all say that y'all don't have a problem with that, but I feel like really terrible doing that. So take that for, for what it is. Maybe if uh, I keep on getting asked, I'll just let it happen and I'll, uh, I'll just, yeah, be okay with it. Um, will I be doing any guest posings in Texas? Um, yes, all of August. <laughs> uh, the first weekend in August, I am going to be guest posing. I guess the second one's not in Texas, but the first weekend, August 6th, be guest posing at the Lila Brada Classic. Uh, the following weekend, August um, 12th, I'll be in Colorado, guest posing the Colorado Cup. Then the following weekend, uh, August 20th, I will be uh, back in Houston, guest posing at the Ronnie Coleman Classic. So, uh, really excited for the guest posing. We got lined up for August. I have a lot of fun doing them. Um, you know, it's a great chance to get, get to, you know, chop it up with a bunch of meatheads backstage and then, you know, do my thing on stage. So, you know, it's a lot of fun getting to do them. And, uh, you know, this far out from the O, it's nothing but good practice in my mind, you know, stage presence and everything. So, yeah. 
Moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, why did you take out the Meadows hammer curl? Um, rotated them out of the arm day because uh, my elbows started getting a little angry as they do anytime I keep hammer curls in for an extended period of time. So, um, you know, just letting my elbows chill out a little and we'll throw them back in. Okay, how do you grow the mid back, you know, lower mid traps and rhomboids? Um, the biggest thing with those, with your mid back and like any row you're doing in general, is you want to really focus on letting your scapula move as much as possible. So if you're thinking about how your body is shaped, you know, your rib cage is, is round, your scapula is on top of your rib cage. As you let your shoulder protract, that scapula is traveling around your rib cage and you know all the muscles you're talking about anchor or assist in moving that so whenever you get that maximum protraction and then as you row think about getting your elbows back as far as possible that maximum retraction that's going to be the best way to really target um, that middle back muscular tree you're talking about um, you know some other tips that i'd say is make sure whatever exercise you're doing is chest supported really and really focus on driving your chest into the pad the whole time uh, don't let it come off, you know, to lift the weight. Really drive it in and focus on getting your elbows back, keeping your chest driven. Um, moving on from that one. Uh, what material are your Win the Day shirts made out of? It depends on the shirt. Um, the, you know, traditional, this one, the one that I have on right now, we printed them on Next Level t-shirts. Um, we've got some shirts in the uh, at the printer right now. We're printing on some Comfort Colors shirts and some Dickies shirts. Um, so, like I said, this depends on the shirt. Uh, one thing I can say is any shirt that I put out there is one that I would personally love to wear because I wear my clothes a lot. So, um, rest assured, regardless of what shirt it is, it is a quality shirt. I'm not just you know picking the cheapest shirt and selling them. I'm <laughs> Picking a shirt that I'd like to wear and then mass producing them and selling them to y'all and myself. Because at the end of the day, if I paid for them, I technically bought it, right? Nothing's free. <laughs> um, how to get your meals in if you do a 9 to 5 job. Um, preparation. You know, failure to prepare is preparing to fail. Um, you know, it depends on your job. You know, I've heard, you know, here at Labrada, you know, every, the whole office is eating, you know, three or four times a day while they're here. It's just kind of understood, you know, get your meals in, then get back to your desk. Um, that's one end of the spectrum. You know, the other end of the spectrum, I know, you know, like if you're working like in, you know, like a pick and sort warehouse or, you know, a very hard physical labor job, this or that, you know, ducking out three or four times during the workday for 10 or 15 minutes just isn't in the cards. Um, if you fall on that end of the spectrum, I'd say what you should focus on is, you know, preparing, you know, shakes that are blended from whole food that you can slam easily, you know, take a uh, bathroom break and slam it while you're in the bathroom. Um, you know, if you're over here on this far end of the spectrum, like you can do whatever you want at work. It really just comes down to you not being a lazy ass, prep your food. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's everywhere in between on the spectrum. Um, for nine to fivers, I'm a huge proponent of, you know, of blending and drinking food. Um, I do it because my appetite sucks and because of how much I'm having to eat, but the convenience factor is definitely a factor too. Um, so if you're really hard pressed to, you know, get a meal in, it is way worse to not eat than it is to, you know, drink, you know, a half a cup of oats and a scoop of whey blended with some peanut butter and a banana. Just facts. Um, any hunting plans this year? Um, no actual hunts in the uh, books, but you know I live in Texas and we have a uh, really bad feral hog problem here. And I have a lot of friends that really enjoy going hog hunting. So chances are I will end up going hog hunting a couple times uh, before the year is over. Um, that's definitely something that I need to do. You know, here in the next. Uh, Next, probably like six or seven weeks, though, because, you know, you go out at 10 o'clock at night and get down at like two. And when you're in prep, that doesn't really work. All right. One more and then we will. Uh, we'll get out of here. Um, best ab exercises. So, you know, I'm a really big proponent of, you know, training muscles from, you know, their function and, you know, your function, your ab, obviously is to, uh, you know, trunk flexion. So 
Um, it's not to do your neck like this or to bring your shoulder girdle up or, you know, your hip flexor shouldn't be involved. So what I'm getting at is, you know, the best ab exercises are just a very locked in, isolated, you know, crunch to train your abdominals. And then, um, you know, a hanging leg raise, in my opinion, again, done with really good form, you know, to train your abdominals from the other point. Um, but yeah, if you want to watch a video on what I think are the best ab exercises, I actually did a Tuesday tip on that. So check that out. But anyways, I'm going to wrap up on that one. If you liked the Q&A, be sure to like this video and subscribe so you can see when the next one comes out. And if you want your question answered, uh, be sure to keep an eye out for the uh, story prompt on my Instagram. Um, as always, appreciate y'all following along. See y'all next time.